heart disease is the number one killer of women. A woman's risk for cardiovascular disease increases as she gets older. And joining us now to talk about the risk factors that every woman should know is Dr. Rita Germain from St. Francis Hospital and Heart Center. Dr. Germain, thanks for joining us. Hi, good morning. Good Thanks morning. So for having me. You know, I think that? a lot of people might be surprised, especially women, to hear that heart disease, you know, is the number one killer of women. I think most women think it's cancer. Yeah, that's exactly right. So we put a lot of emphasis in the news on cancer, but actually heart disease is the number one killer of women in this country. And a lot of it is attributed to lifestyle changes. So what I want to talk about a little bit today is what are some of those lifestyle changes you can make to limit your risk of heart disease in the future? So what, let's, let's talk about that. Let's start with that. Yeah, so um, the main thing is really looking at what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So what I mean by lifestyle modification is diet and exercise. So a whole food plant-based diet is one of the healthiest things you can do to lower your risk of heart disease. Some of the current studies show that by incorporating a plant-based diet, you can actually cut your risk of heart disease by 52%. So what do I mean by a whole food plant-based diet? What I mean by that is choosing complex carbohydrates that have low glycemic index, foods that are high in soluble fiber, eliminating anything with sugar in it that you drink, so primarily focusing on water as your main um, liquid, consuming... Um, very, very little alcohol, so less than one drink a day, if anything, would be important. And when exercising, at least 150 minutes a week of aerobic activity with building in strength training at least three times a week. Wow. Okay. So when you talk about plant-based, are we supposed to stay away from, from meats? Yeah. So ideally, what I mean by plant-based is avoiding animal products. Now, why are animal products bad? Well, I don't need to go into the environmental reasons today, but we're talking about heart health. And animal products ubiquitously contain saturated fat. And saturated fat is a leading component of what causes atherosclerosis, which is plaque formation in the vessels that lead leads to coronary artery disease. And that plaque formation can build up in the brain, it can build up in the peripheral vessels, as well as the heart. So incorporating as many soluble, fiber-rich foods, low glycemic index carbohydrates, um, complex carbohydrates, and plenty of fruits and vegetables is very, very important to that diet. And you can get your protein sources from plant-based things like lentils, beans, other legumes, tofu. All of those things contain plenty of protein. So you're never going to become protein deficient by adopting a whole food plant-based diet. Okay, it, 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 more like, um, is it the Mediterranean diet very popular? That's a very healthy diet to, to sort of gear yourself towards? So omega-3s are very, very healthy to heart health. However, you don't need a Mediterranean diet to increase your amount of omega-3s. Seeds um, like flax, chia, pumpkin seeds contain tons of omega-3s. So there's a lot of plant-based nutrition that is not eating fish or fish oil to get those omega-3s into your diet. Okay, let's talk about some of the, the symptoms um, of a heart attack because they are yeah. different between, you know, they for a man and a woman. And I think a woman may not know she could be experiencing a heart attack. What are the symptoms? That's exactly right. So people classically think of this word angina as what's responsible for causing a heart attack. And angina doesn't always happen in women. Primarily, angina happens because there's a, a disconnect between the amount of blood that's going through the vessel and the amount of, of blood that the body needs. Now, other symptoms that you need to be on alert for are things just like shortness of breath, having um, indigestion or tightness in your chest or pressure or it feels like somebody's squeezing your heart. That classic sign of having crushing chest pain with pain radiating down your left arm doesn't always happen in women. And the other thing to remember is it doesn't always happen in men too if they're diabetic. A lot of times these atypical symptoms, which really can be more shortness of breath or squeezing or like an elephant sitting on your chest, is more common in women. Hmm. Is, is the, the rate of a you know, killing so many women because they, they don't even know the symptoms and they may be having those symptoms, but, but not getting help immediately. That's exactly right. So in general, people tend to um, negate their symptoms or to ignore them for a longer period of time, primarily because 
they don't think that one, what they're doing is unhealthy. They don't know that they have these risk factors for heart disease. And two is that because they're ignoring them longer, they're causing more heart damage in the long run. So your advice, when would a woman ask, you know, decide I need emergency help here? So anytime you feel that your body is telling you something it doesn't feel right, you should seek help. And that's the importance of getting a primary care doctor or having a doctor that knows you, because if these symptoms are something that you've experienced like nothing else before, you want to be able to ask somebody what this could be. So it's very important that you establish care with somebody when you're healthy. So that way you have a primary care doctor that's familiar with you and your health and that you seek help if something doesn't feel right. And the primary care doctor, too, also so important because, you know, that doctor is going to be checking and watching your blood pressure, which is extremely important to know. That's exactly right. So somebody that knows you and they met you and they're healthy, that's important because then it can fall your risk factors over time and look to mitigate these risk factors. And just like our conversation today, these are the same conversations a primary care doctor should be having with you annually so that you do minimize your risk of, of uh, these risk factors for coronary disease. Is there, is there a connection between pregnancy and a risk of, of a heart attack? So there is, um, there's a couple of more rare conditions that um, are associated with pregnancy. Um, what we think about is that you can actually have a spontaneous rupture of your coronary vessels. Um, that's more rare. That's not something we see all the time. There's other associated conditions with that. Um, but there is um, also a chance of heart failure happening after pregnancy um, that's not linked to coronary disease. Um, it's actually just the presence and changing in the estrogen of your body that can cause the muscle to become weak over time. Okay. Um, okay. But pregnancy in itself, obviously what's really important is making sure you are healthy enough to get pregnant and so that your blood pressure is controlled, that your cholesterol is controlled. All those things want to be explored before you even opt for the idea of getting pregnant. What about menopause? Is there a higher risk when you are going through menopause? Yeah, so unfortunately, because of the waning estrogen levels, you know, one thing we talk about cancer, one thing that estrogen is not so helpful for is cancer, but one thing it is so helpful for is heart disease. And when you start to lose those amounts of estrogen in your body, um, you do increase your risk of coronary disease. So that's why I was saying it's very important to establish care with somebody ideally prior to menopause, um, because you do know that your risk factors for coronary disease go up just by being postmenopausal. Okay. And anybody who hasn't seen their doctor in a while, just because you've sort of been putting it off, please go to the doctor because these are such important things you need to discuss with your primary care doctor who can find problems before they even start, right? That's right. So it's very important that going back to our original conversation, we don't ignore our own health that we go to see our doctor on a regular basis, even during COVID, that we continue to exercise even during COVID, and that we don't make excuses and drink more alcohol and change our diet because of COVID. Exactly. A point, I, you know, I need to add the exercise there. The, <laughs> a, little, a few more hours of that on your advice. So thank you. 150 thank minutes a week. That's right. Okay. I'll do it because you told me to. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Great. Thank you, Dr. Germain. Thank you Thank so much. You. We really appreciate it. That was just wonderful information. You're welcome. Have a great day.